Hello. In this video, we're going to look at, a, at the function transformations. We're going to start off with a vertical transformation. And that looks like this. And this will make sense because we're taking uh, f of x as y. So f of x is y, and then we're, we're adding or subtracting something from it. So the y is the vertical axis, right? So in this case, we're going to be going up or down. Uh, for f of x plus 1, that'll be a shift upward of all of the points of 1. So this is f of x here, and we're doing f of x plus 1, and that's going to be a vertical shift upward of one unit. So I'm going to take all these points, shift them up 1, and that resulting graph there, the purple graph, that is going to be our f of x plus 1. So the black graph is f of x. That was given here. And then the purple graph is f of x plus 1. And that was the shift up of 1. Now if I take f of x minus 1, then that's going to be obviously a shift down. So we'll move all the points down one unit, connect the dots, and that will be f of x minus 1. So those are vertical shifts. Obviously, if there's a vertical shift, I think you would understand that there's going to be a way to accomplish a horizontal shift. And it also might make sense that if f of x, as we said here, if f of x is y, and then adding or subtracting something from that is going to give us a vertical up and down shift, just like the y-axis. Now I take this, and now I'm adding or subtracting something from x. Instead of the whole f of x, I'm just focusing on x, and I'm subtracting something from x. So in that case, that's going to be a horizontal shift. Now, uh, the one thing is this minus 1, you might think that that's going to be to the left because it's minus, but it's actually to the right. So I'm going to take each of the points, and I'm going to shift each of them one unit to the right. And then that red graph is my resulting horizontal shift one unit to the right. Next, I'm going to do a horizontal shift really quickly here to the left, and that'll be the opposite of what you would think. A plus one will shift it to the left. So I would move each point one unit to the right and get that resulting red graph here, and that is f of x, f of x plus one. Next, I am going to look at doing a reflection. Now, in a reflection, again, f of x, we recall, that is like y. So if I do a negative of y, that's going to be an up and down reflection. So I'm going to take each point, specifically the up and down is, that wherever this point is, it's going to reflect across the x-axis up. In this case, if it's below the x-axis, it's going to reflect up through the x-axis. And then this point here is going to reflect down. This point here is going to reflect down. And this point here is going to reflect down. So this last point here, it's 2 above, so it's going to reflect 2 down. And that will give us our uh, negative f of x reflection through the x-axis. And we'll connect those points. And that is going to be negative f of x. Now, that was a reflection through the, this axis here. That was a reflection through the x-axis. So what do you think a reflection through the y-axis would look like? If this is a reflection through the x-axis, then does it make sense that a reflection through the y-axis would look like that? So let's take a look at that. So this will be a reflection through the y-axis. 
and I'm going to take each point and flip it through the y-axis. So this point is to the left, one unit. I'm going to flip it one unit to the right. This, this point here is on the y-axis, so I'm not going to do anything with that. This point here is two units to the right. I'll flip it two units to the left. And this point here is two un three units to the right, three units to the left. Connect your points. And there we have a nice mirror image that is giving us f of negative x. Finally, we're going to look at a, what's called a non-rigid transformation. Now something that might help us with a non-rigid transformation are the actual points. So if I take uh, the points that were given and fill out this table of values, uh, this point down here in the left, that's going to be point negative 1, negative 1. Uh, this point on the y-axis is going to be point zero, 1. Uh, this point is going to be point two, 1 and this point is going to be point three, two. So in a non-rigid transformation, I'm going to be asked for something, some multiple of f of x is one way of doing it. And then another way of doing it would be to be asked for some multiple of x. So you see that this keeps happening, that we're either doing something to the x, as I am here, or we're doing something to the y, considering f of x to be y, as I am here. Okay, so this uh, transformation is pretty, pretty simple. Using the table of values for this new function, I'm going to have... I'm going to have uh, x, f of x, and then one, two, three, four points. And those four points, um, if I take negative one, then I want f of negative one, which I know is negative one. And I should have put a 2 in here. So right here, I, I needed a 2, right? Can't really read that. Uh, but I want to I kind of want to highlight that I'm multiplying this by 2. So I'm multiplying that by 2, which means I'm multiplying this by 2. All right? Now, try and, this is important to say I've got f of negative 1 here. And this, and this is getting hard to fall because of all the writing, but I've got f of negative 1 here, and I know back on the left side here, over here, that f of negative 1 is negative 1. So I can finish evaluating this just by doing a substitution, saying f of negative 1 is, is negative 1, and 2 times that is negative 2. Now, that becomes important later on when we look at this, at this one. But uh, for the one that we're on right now, it's actually pretty easy. If I just go uh, take each of the points, I mean, can you tell how did I get this point here, this negative 2? I just multiplied the y value by 2. Now, the problem is that's not going to be so, it's not going to be so simple when we, look at, when we look at this one. But in this case, it is simple, and we can just go, Okay, so when, uh, if I look at this, this point here, I have 0, 1, so I'm just going to double the y value, and I have 0, 2. And then for uh, x is 2, I have 2, 1, so I'm going to have 2, 2, and then I'm going to have 3, 4, and I just plot those points, um, negative 1, so negative 1, negative 2, and then I'm going to go up to z I'm going to go up to zero two up here, and then I'm going to go over to uh, two two, and then up to three four, and that gave me two f of x. Now this next one is a little bit more complicated, so I'm not going to try and do it on a video, but uh, we'll go ahead and uh, that's something that you may see in class.